morning body of Christ, God bless you. God keep you. God heal you. God deliver you. And God restore you. May this word of encouragement uplift you. Comfort you, guide you, and even truly make you think and examine your walk with God. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, as I've already come before you, humbling myself before the mighty hand of God, may you use me to glorify your word in this day, on this day, for your people and your people alone. May those who are not saved be saved if they hear this message. And may this message go viral, Lord God, to remind people of who they truly are. In Jesus' name, amen. I was watching this message about this young guy who's 25 years old yesterday. And his, he went to heaven and hell. Or hell and then heaven. At first I was skeptical, skeptical about what he was saying. But then he made a statement and I looked at his face and his statement was one that I made 20 years ago. He said when he was in heaven and it was time for him to come back, he asked God, why do I have to go back? He said in the presence of God was this joy, this peace, this reverence toward God that the world does not have. And I remember 19, 20 years ago when I was in the presence of the Lord in my apartment, how when the Spirit of God, when I first had my first full encounter with the Holy Spirit, how when the presence of God was leaving my, my apartment, I asked him, why are you leaving me here? Don't leave me here. Because it was in that presence that there's nothing that this earth can give and come close to experiencing. And so after that statement, I, I really thought like truly humbled myself. And this morning, I wanted to share with the body of Christ something that was a part of my prayer this morning. I said, you know, Father God. There is nothing in my flesh that is good. I truly, truly understand this. My righteousness. Now I'm singling myself out because it's up to you to do that for yourself. But I said my righteousness is as dirty, filthy rags. My righteousness could never, ever even come close, even in thought, to being in the presence of God to come even before a holy God and pray. The Bible says we must come to the Lord in spirit and in truth. Just that alone, just, I mean, my, I, we have to understand something. You was born with purpose. You're not here by accident. You may be looking at all the things you're doing wrong but you came with purpose. Your, your, your sins, your thoughts, your words, your actions, your deeds are not catching God off guard. He understood that we all were going to fall short daily in thoughts, words, actions, and deeds. But we came with purpose. And if you're still here listening to this message this morning, you have a purpose. Your sinful nature, your carnal way of thinking and living, you have to take that captive through the power of the Holy Spirit and reading the Word of God to come into that union of realizing you could never ever do anything to get in right standards with God but believe that His Son Jesus Christ died for you. Follow Him and get close to understanding the word of God for yourself. Now I'm saying all this because I was so broken this morning. Thinking that I serve a holy God. A pure and holy and glorious being. That even.
remember my eyes are watering up saying this to you, realizing that a lot of us think that, oh, because we go to church, because we're doing the best to live holy, you know, we pay our tithes, we help the homeless, and so on and so forth, that our actions are, are getting us in this place with God. No, we're supposed to be acting like that. We're supposed to be doing that because we are saved. But to think about this young man was like, he said, I stood before God and was waiting just to hear from him. Not, you had to hear it. I mean, I was so convicted thinking here I am a pastor and I, I, I'm, you know, preaching God's word and, you know, I'm doing the best I can to live holy. I love the Lord. But there was this space in my heart, in my inner man that realized I'm serving a holy God and for some reason I think that I could tap into this place with him because of the things that God is doing through me when the Bible clearly states in Philippians that he's given us the will and the power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit to do what he's called us to do. But to think about being in that place of holiness with God, man, I, this morning I was like, God, I, I, you know what? I am a child. People, stop being so self-righteous. We will never, ever be in that place of really getting into the place of, of just holiness with God. I mean, I, I, I just, you know, even as I'm telling this to you, it's because a lot of people push other people away from God because they act so self-righteous. Like they've done some great thing in the spiritual realm to earn the right to tell somebody how far from grace they are. We all are far from grace. None is righteous, no, not one. But those of you that think you're not even good enough to come to Jesus, that your sin is so dirty, man, do you know that the crimson blood of Jesus Christ has washed away every past, present, and future sin that any of us, even Christians, can do? Jesus died on the cross for you and me, personalized the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ for yourself and realize that you are serving a God who was was and is and will always be so pure so holy so godly so omnipotent so omnipresent so omnipotent so glorious and he became human flesh to die in our place Man, just the revelation of myself. I'm like, God, I am just, my righteousness is nothing. Even when I'm in doing what you're calling me to do and living according to the best I can to the word of God, I still could never, ever, ever, ever be good enough to come before him. That's why it's the blood that's why it's the sacrifice. That's why it's the atonement of Jesus Christ and him being our Lord and Savior that makes us righteous and worthy to even go to God in prayer. We, are, we were once sinners saved by God's grace and mercy that we could take on the likeness and the image of Christ and learn how to live holy. And that word holy means to be set apart. That our life is set apart for God's purpose of the, our lives being created. That we are here with purpose. I don't care if you're homeless, if you're a dolphin, 
prostitute, gang member, homosexual, when you get right with God and you change your ways by the deliverance of the Holy Spirit, your life will be a living testimony. The Bible says in Revelations, they overcame them by the blood and the word of their testimony. That is showing the world the power of God, Jesus Christ, through us. That our testimony of what he did for us, in us, through us, by us, and for us, is what gives us the right to call ourselves children of the Most High God. And I I just, last night, we, I was on a prayer uh, line, and they had a, a section where they were selling this brother to pray for repentance, and I guess he didn't hear it or wasn't coming on, and I was so honored because I knew that I had to come before the Holy God of, of Israel and of my life and say, Father, forgive me. I repent of thinking how good I am or how, you know, the, the things that I'm doing, I'm coming before a holy God. How do I even come into that presence? I understand why he says, come to me in spirit and truth. Pray as much as possible in the spirit, not in the flesh. Pray in the spirit because you can only serve God, love God, worship God, come into a union with God in the spirit realm because God is spirit. He said, no flesh and blood shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Brothers and sisters, the bottom line is we ain't ever, ever going to be good enough, do enough, be enough to find any type of worthiness to come before God in our prayers. The Bible says a broken and contrite spirit God will not turn away from. I realize myself as much as God uses me to preach his word, I'm nothing without him. That it took this 25 year old kid to tell his testimony for the spirit of God to sit me down and really have me look into the depths of my own soul and realize that the God I serve, the God that I say I love, the God that I say I worship, am I really doing it? Can I really show God my love, not just by my works and doing what the word says, but to spend that quiet time with him, to let him just touch me the way he is right now, sharing this word on my way to work. I pray brothers and sisters, for those of you who think you're not good enough and that your sin has totally separated you from him and there is no way and that's a lie from the pit of hell. The devil wants you to think that because he can't get back there. God loves you. He died for you. He became dirty, sinful, likeness flesh and took on the death of us to give us immortality, life, and eternity with him. Just to wrap your mind around that, we all, every Christian believer, follower of the Lord Jesus Christ was a sinner damned for hell. Our sin was no greater than yours. And every day, even though we are not sinners no more, we still sin. We sin all the time. I sinned this morning just having a wrong thought is 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 an error god says he knows our thoughts before he thinks we think them could you realize that those thoughts that you have throughout the day ones that come from the enemy and ones that you create in your own head that are not holy that are not pure that are not edifiable do you realize that god sees all that before you even finish the thought just that alone brings me to a humility that my God, my God, why would he want to save me? So don't think that that can't take you.
from the presence of a holy God. And for those of us that are walking in right standards with God, living the best we can, being holy, sanctified, set apart, sharing the word, living the word, teaching the word, being the word, please understand that we are still not even close to the place of being in the presence of such a pure, holy God. So Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning, Lord, that you allowed me to share my heart with the body of Christ, to share your glory, your love, who you are, how you are, what you are in our life, Lord. I pray that you will continue to humble me when I won't humble myself. Continue to cleanse me, work on me, chasten me, for the Bible says, those he loves, he chastens. Lord, I submit myself and rededicate my life to you, even though I may believe and think in my own heart that I'm living the way I should. Lord, I know that even my own thoughts need to be washed in the blood of Jesus. For those who are feeling like they cannot get close to you, that their sin has separated them from you, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I admit I am a sinner in need of a Savior. There is only one Savior, and his name is Jesus Christ. I confess that I cannot get to heaven without making Jesus my Lord and Savior. And today, I profess, as I believe in my heart, and confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. I am now saved. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that small but simple and sweet prayer from your heart and not from your mind, welcome to the family. God bless you all. Have a very blessed and prosperous day today. And may you take some serious time to examine yourself and see where you're at. Can you humble yourself to realize that the God you serve is more mightier, more deeper, more holier than we are really giving him credit for. God bless you.